question form and go behind the Iron Curtain USA. Well, what about the Libertarian Party? Can you tell us a little bit about what it stands for? Libertarian Party is based on a firm principle of non-aggression. We all take a pledge when we join the party that we will never initiate force against somebody else. And that is uh, you know, a pretty simple principle that everybody should endorse. It's a principle of what makes civilization. That is, you respect other people's life, you respect other people's property. Thou shalt not steal and thou shalt not murder. It's, it's that simple and most everybody agrees to that. And the next question ought to be is, well, why, does, why should you be different than Republican and Democrats if they tend to agree with that same principle? Well, we, we believe it's such an important moral principle that if we can't take somebody else's property and we can't hurt anybody or we can't intimidate anybody or threaten to use force, we don't think the government can either. But we see the government as the initiator of force to bring about social and economic changes day in and day out. I mean. They, they may not come up to our front door with a gun, on occasion they do, but we know if we don't deliver our money and our records and do obediently what the government wants in order to give up our portion of our income through the Internal Revenue Service, the gun will be quickly at our door and we will be in prison. So it's the threat and the intimidation and therefore they're transferring wealth, something that we can't do as individuals. So we as libertarians reject this whole idea of forcible redistribution of wealth, which is the welfare state. Same way in personal liberties. We apply this principle in the area of personal liberties, and although I might want you and think you should leave a certain, lead a certain lifestyle, because I think it's good and right and moral, I have no right to tell you what to do. You know, if, if you want to live a certain way, and I disagree, that's, that's tough. You know, that's your, your choosing. That's the individual's choice, as long as you don't hurt somebody else. So the person has the right to his own life and his liberty, his own lifestyle, as with one special rule, that your lifestyle, the individual's lifestyle, can't hurt somebody else. So if you do things that I disapprove of, I, as a libertarian, am tolerant and I accept that up until the point of no injury to anybody else. Now, I talk uh, to libertarians or listen to them or view them on TV, and they're talking about government power all the time and abuse of governmental power. But I also see some libertarians, not a whole lot of them, but a lot of them also talk about corporate power as well. In other words, they're talking about power in general. There seem to be two types of libertarians. Well, um, I don't, I don't find, I, I think we have one type of libertarian because we all accept the same principle. I think it's more easily found that you have several types of Republicans and several types of Democrats because they're interventionists and they can intervene any way they want. But uh, I think libertarians are pretty consistent in certainly condemning the power of government. Uh, I haven't heard a libertarian saying that we need more government or they're not a libertarian. But on the corporate power, I think where the confusion might come is corporate size, if it's gained by serving the consumer, is not necessarily evil. So if, uh, if you have 90% uh, of the car industry, for some miraculous reason or for some unknown reason there's no imports if you have 90 percent of it that doesn't bother me as a libertarian if you have the best car at the best price and the consumers are very happy now if you own if you have 90 percent or 100 percent of a utility company and you're gouging the customers and the customers have no place else to go we detest the corporate size we detest corporate power when it's gained through government power, you know, government coercion, if it's a contract. Uh, the military industrial complex is a pretty good example of how large industries benefit by big government. Of course, in big banking, big banks benefit by this monetary system because they're sort of in collusion with the Federal Reserve System, so we detest that. We detest bigness and we detest corporate power when it's gained through privilege from government. If corporations are large, and, and there's always free entry in a free market. If they're large because they serve the consumer, we don't worry too much about that because we know the consumer is benefiting. If they get to the point if they had 100% of an industry, which is not possible in a free market, but let's say just for instance, if they had 100% and then they started to gouge the people, there would immediately be competition. 
the people, you know, there has to be, there always has to be free entry and free competition. But there's nobody's ever figured out uh, where there's ever been a, a true monopoly in a free market system. The, all monopolies can be traced to some form of government protectionism. Well, of course, now we talk about the government and uh, corporations. But as you've said, up at the top, they're all the same people. The uh, corporate uh, executives go to and from the uh, government. They hold positions in the government. Uh, the people from the uh, Trilateral Commission and the Bilderbergers and all, they're all corporate people. And uh, they have their relationships and interlocks with the banks and with uh, universities and foundations and all that. So to talk about one, so you're really talking about one source of power instead of corporation on one side and government on the other, because it's all one pot, as you said. I, I think it's become one pot. Question four, go behind the Iron Curtain USA.